How do artists make distance in their landscapes? Let's look at this example from David Hockney again to find out. There are three main ways that artists can create the sense of distance. They are the size of the things in the landscape, the amount of detail that is on the items, and the location or placement on the page. So let's take a look at these three things. Okay, why is how big or small you draw something important? The larger size that you draw an object means that it's closer. And the smaller you draw the object means that it is farther away. For an example, I made a circle around this stop sign so we can compare the size of this stop sign with the size of the other signs, especially the one that's smallest and farthest away. Notice how much smaller the artist drew the last stop sign. A normal stop sign would be the same size or about the same size as a stop ahead sign. But in this landscape, the artist drew it much smaller. Now I'll use one of the artist Georgia O'Keeffe's landscapes to show how the amount of detail also shows distance. The amount of detail shows distance because more details means closer, less details means in the middle, and no details means far away. Let's look for amount of detail on Georgia's mountains. On this red mountain here, we see a lot of detail. There is more uh, value shading. We see all of those ridges or valleys. It makes it look more interesting and more 3D. Next, the mountains that we could say are in the middle have some shading, they have some valleys appearing, but not as much and not as obvious as the ones on the Red Mountain. Finally, when you look at the farthest away mountains, the tallest ones, you will see that she put almost no shading, no texture, and it looks like there are a little bit of snow on there, but otherwise a, a solid color. By the way, here's a little tip for any of you who are going to do mountains. Including some blue or purple on the mountains in the most far away part also helps them look far away. Now, Try to find which part of this painting by Monet is close, medium, and far away by noticing the amount of detail. Here are the areas separated out. Which do you think is close? Which is in the middle? Which is far away? If you guessed this part was close, good job. This part has many details, more textures, more colors, lots going on. So this is the close part. If you guess this was middle, good job. In this part, we see some details, but they are smaller. We see just a little texture and not as much texture or details as the close part. Last but not least, this was the far part. As you can see here with the tree, there are really no details. There are solid shapes of color, like light on one side, dark on the other side, and there's not really any texture. Especially look at the blue sky, it's just basically one color of blue. 
So putting it all back together, you can see how the amount of detail gets less as we go farther away in this painting of Monet. The last landscape that we'll take a look at in this video is from Grand Wood. This landscape shows all three ways to create distance. It shows different size, different amount of detail, and place. Can you notice how the size of the objects in this landscape change and get smaller as they get farther away? In fact, one haystack, which is not very big compared to a tree or a house, in the front, the haystack, if you measure it, it's about the same size as the house or some of the small faraway trees. And with amount of detail, again, we can see some texture in the front, in the very close part, but no texture in the far away. What about the place? Have you been noticing that the place in the landscape scene is also important? You may have noticed that the close part of the landscape is always the bottom of the page. The middle part of the landscape is higher up, for example, around the middle of the page. Last, the far part of the landscape can usually be found high on the page and or along what we call the horizon line. Here in the landscape of Grant Wood, you can see that the far part is very tall, very high up along the top of the page. Here in the painting of Monet, the farthest part is actually in the middle because that is the horizon line. You can see the green line where we get the edge of the ground and the sky, and that is the farthest part in this painting. You can decide where you want your horizon line to be when you make your landscape, but just remember that the place on the page is important, and the closest part is on the bottom, Going up from there, it's getting farther and farther away. Now it's your turn. This week, you're going to practice drawing a landscape as a rough draft. When you make your landscape draft, keep in mind the size, amount of detail, and place for the parts of your landscape. 